The carps have been winning a lot. Oh yeah, you're right. See, they've been winning the past three games. This time, they won 12 to 4. Look, we're going to the ceremony today, you know? You mean people are already there and lining up? No, this is a picture of last year's ceremony. It's amazing how even after the bomb was dropped, the Hiroshima Dome didn't collapse. I was 12 years old and then seventh grader at a junior high school. I was exported to Avon, this than a mile away from the epicenter. I was working with 250 classmates. I am standing in the same place where I was working on the morning of August 6, 1945. The skies were perfectly clear without the sounds of the cloud. When the sun went up, the temperature began to rate rapidly. It was hot, you know. Oh, very, very hot. There was no cloud. When the air is around 7.09 a.m. and the clear at 7.31 a.m., the citizen gave the sigh of relief and started dismantling buildings as a fire precaution. There are 350,000 People were in Hiroshima 
including more than 40,000 military personnel. The night before August 6th, the enemy planes were constantly flying over Hiroshima. Around 7.30 the next morning, there was a siren indicating that the planes had retreated from Hiroshima. So all the students and teachers started to go to school. At 8.05, the teachers gathered all the students together on the playground so we could start the morning meeting. I rang the bell and the students started to line up in front of the podium. Today, we have this modern steel podium, but then we only had a wooden one. And I would stand on this and say good morning and say a little speech to everyone. In the shade of the willow tree, there were two or three sixth grade boys. One of the boys started to look at the bright blue sky, like this. And that image was burnt into my mind. Later on, I realized that child must have seen or heard the plane that came from the island called Tenian, the plane that brought the atomic bomb to Hiroshima. Why do you think there's a ceremony? Because of the war and the bomb. It was something like 8 in the morning like that, right? Tell me what happened. It's when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Do you understand it all? Yes, I do. Are you sure?
in basket something word of encouragement. At that time, my best friend Takiko shouted. I hear the sounds of B-29 flying. But when I look up the sky, there white people were trading from the tails of the plane. I saw the airplane just like a bird flying to the northwest. I caught a glimpse of the airplane flying away to the northwest. I was watching like this. But uh, suddenly, I thought I saw some luminous body drop from the tails of the plane. Oh, big, big fireball. It made us, uh, you know, this was the fireball. The, then I lay flat on the ground. At the same time, I had deafening a law which could reach the world of the earth. In that direction, where the sun is coming through, there was a blinding light, like a magnesium flash. It looked like lightning. I was thrown about 15 feet from where I'm standing. There were a lot of broken bricks, poles, and pieces of wood all of this rubble just layered on top of me. And it was very, very dark. I realized I was thrown off to somewhere by a bomb explosion, and it just hit me. I was not dead. I was alive. It was during the summer, a very hot time. Something lukewarm fell from my forehead down to my face, and I realized I must have hurt my head. And if I stayed there, I would keep bleeding, lose consciousness, and eventually die. I thought I had to get out of there while my mind was still clear. So I pushed and crawled, thinking, if I couldn't get out, I would die. Finally, I managed to pry myself out from under the rubble. Luckily, in our family, we don't have anyone that suffered from the bomb. Grandma lived in Sakamachi, so she was far from where the bomb was dropped. Where is Sakamachi? A little further than Matsuda, around that area. But even there, all the windows broke because of the shock and blasting, and there was a lot of noise. Did she think it was a typhoon or something? She said it was much worse than a typhoon. I have no idea how long I have been unconscious. But when I began the consciousness, bright sounding morning had turned into night. I wanted to see my friend. I looked around me, but I couldn't find her. 
she may have been blown off by the blast. I don't know. I found my purse and hand and then arms and then legs from here has been completely burned. I was watching airplane with my hand hold my in front of my eyes. So you can see it, both small ha hand and finger completely damaged. Terror struck me and made me feel I must go home because I felt I'm very, very hot. When I got out, I told the children to stop crying, that I was there, so they can stop crying. I told the children to sit still while I ran out to look for help. I ran about a quarter mile to the rescue squad station. Everywhere I looked was strange and desolate. It was almost as dark as night and I kept seeing all of these broken houses. I had thought that a bomb dropped on my school, but as far as I could see, everything was destroyed. So I kept wondering, where did the bomb drop? When I finally reached the rescue station, there was nobody there, so I ran back to the school. There were many students buried under the collapsed school building, crying in pain, so we started to pull them out. Besides myself, there were only two or three other woman teachers to help. All the other teachers were lying on the ground, unconscious. We managed to get all of the students out, but when we reached two young second grade girls, they didn't have a pulse anymore. I remember thinking, children shouldn't have to die. I felt so sad. There was one young girl who had a very serious head injury. It looked like a split pomegranate. I thought, the poor girl, she'll probably die here tonight without ever seeing her parents again. Then that girl, with a little weak voice like a bug, said, teacher, I have to pee. I need to go to the bathroom. I said, no, you're too hurt to move. It's okay if you just go lying down. Don't worry, it's all right. The way I spoke to that child and cared for her before she died, I still remember it like yesterday.
The school children and I had been working in the building about 10 minutes when a sudden flash of light made me think there was a bomb in the building. The students all ran away and were scattered. I went to the riverbank to see what was happening. After standing there for a while, four or five of the students who had run away saw me and waved their arms, yelling, Teacher, help me. The image of those students will never leave my mind, running over to me with their hair all wild, hollow and dirty faces, helplessly waving their arms at me. That scene later led me to make a painting called Scream. And here, where I am standing, was already crowded with a lot of people. They held their hand in front of their chest. Their hair stood on end. Some of the victims were crying and shouting. Their mothers to help them. So I want to jump into the water. But uh, when I look into the water, countless dead bodies were carried away by the water, some sinking and floating. These paintings are actually not based on what I've seen, but are images of what I imagined Hiroshima Harbor would be, filled with bodies that came from the rivers. How do the bones in the bottom of Hiroshima Harbor feel? I painted while thinking of things like that. Whether they would be sad, or lonely, whether they would be angry at the people who dropped the atomic bomb. I would think of these things while imagining and painting the bones on the bottom of the harbor. I don't know where most of my students disappeared to, but I could imagine their bodies floating down some river and ending up at the bottom of Hiroshima Harbor. We could not run away. 
she decided to stay there and then ask me, give me water. But I couldn't give her a drop of water. Then she decided and said to me, you have to go to school. Oh yeah. And then tell my teacher I'm here. But she pleased with her eyes to take her with me. Then I heard stories about another plane and another bomb, so I tried to run away. By chance, I found my wife as she was trying to escape with our one-and-a-half-year-old child. It really was a coincidence. Our child was very thirsty and was asking for water. I thought if I could get some water, my child will live. But as I was leaving to get some water, the child just died. For some reason, I can't remember my child's face when he died. I lost two uh, friends who were with me on that day. The left half of my face was all burnt, and also my hand. My arm from here to halfway down my back, and both knees. My mouth wouldn't open, and for a while they had to feed me liquid. Many people who were burnt, like my wife, would get these red spots on their skin. Their hair would fall out if you brushed it. And their teeth would loosen and fall out too. The story got around that when that started to happen, you would die soon after. My wife started to get the red spots and her hair began to fall out. I began to worry that she would die soon and I had this feeling of horror, this feeling of being so close to death yet having no medicine, no help. And that's how we live. came into the city and they found me and they took me out of the hill. On the way to my home, I saw my father. He was a volunteer fireman. He was pouring his water in his fire truck. Father! Father, I'm here. He said to me, your mother is waiting. Please go home. But he rushed into the Hiroshima city to put out the fire for three days. 
then moved to the first aid station. Treated the victim and helped the disported dead bodies. Then he became a cancer and died after effect of the radiation. My neighbors took me to the first aid station. I started suffer from lingering high fever, diarrhea, vomiting, breathing gum, half of here fell out. I was on the verge of death for four days. It took uh, four months to recover with my face. When I, my face recovered, four months later, I wanted to see the mirror. But uh, my mother would not give me the mirror. But uh, when I could work and I did the mirror, I found myself in a mirror. It was disappeared beyond all recognition. I couldn't believe it was my face. When I cried and cried because I thought I cannot marry it if I had such a horrible scars. I have received this afternoon a message from the Japanese government which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. On August 15, hearing the emperor's announcement on the radio, my spirits felt a shock. My immediate reaction was that I had been deceived. So many things had been said that I believed. That this was a holy war. That it was to build a strong Asian community. But it was actually a war of aggression. Soon after the war ended, I was wondering why the American dropped the atomic bomb and also I was wondering why Japanese government didn't say we want to stop the war. So. I thought we should not hate the American because when I met American, they were so kind, gradually coming and trust Americans. I realized that had we Japanese possess the nuclear weapon, we might have used it. Therefore, their enemy is not America, it is war and those weapons. I would think more about this later on. And I came to believe that this aggression, this invasion, caused the atomic bomb to be dropped on Hiroshima.
All those scenes, all those desperate and sad scenes were the result of this war that we caused. I personally feel that I must become a person who will not be deceived. As an educator, I would constantly think of how to teach students so that they will not be deceived. Educate students so that they will want peace. I was one of 50 who survived out of 250 classmates. Young people don't know the war experience. So I'm now telling my story because I don't want anyone ever experience the experience I had had. When I was in school, they had a lot of classes about peace, a lot more than they have now. There was a movie that we saw at school the other day. It was a movie about the war. In the beginning of the movie, a little pony was born. After the pony came, a bomb dropped in Hiroshima. Then the pony told the people to run away because another bomb would drop. And after a couple of minutes, the bomb did drop. In Nagasaki? Yeah. What happened to the pony? It was okay. And it was titled The Pony of Nagasaki? Was it a cartoon? It had something like puppets. Puppets? I think it had puppets, but it was more like a movie with regular people. So it was something like puppets in a regular movie. I think it was something like that. He doesn't remember anything. Although I suffer after effect of radiation, I studied very hard. I did not want to stop my activity, but horrible carried on my face and hand kept me from finding a job after graduation. Also, I have to overcome the distress being treated at the cast by our society because the people were very afraid to have this homo baby. So people don't want to marry so is a Hibakusha survivor of Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. It was a horrible time. When we were puberty, we couldn't find any uh, job and then uh, marriage. Then uh, living 
Kiyoshi Tanimoto provide Monday evening gathering for them. We are listening some and singing him with the others. We finally found peace. And then living Kiyoshi Tanimoto introduced us to the American journalist and the Christian. They invited us to come to the New York. Hiroshima Milton, five already died due to cancer, and most of them could not marry. They have to live alone. These paintings are titled Reaching for Peace, but the title is not that important. To search and find a brightness, a light of peace, a brightness from such a dark and gloomy background, that is the concept. I would like to continue painting such themes about peace. It is my conviction.
Being a survivor, I always have the hope in my heart of living in a world with no atomic bombs. The children nowadays, the younger generation, all hope and pray for a peaceful world, a world without war. But hoping and praying alone will not bring peace. They must also work for it with their hands and feet. Because just hoping for peace without taking action will do nothing. This is what I would like to tell the children.